Hello and welcome to Vokta Plays the Longest Journey, episode number 54. I'm your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Vokta Rain, and hopefully today we actually have some game sounds going on. Uh, that would be nice. So now I need to remember if was this the guy I was talking to who had the familiar voice, because obviously yesterday I was booing about it and none of you could actually hear it, so I think it was this dude, but I can't remember. Are you ready for the questions now? Yeah, it was. No, give me some Listen time to, to prepare. Voice. Then return when you are ready, and I will test your knowledge of the four tales. Okay, that is a voice actor who has definitely been on this show before. On this show, on in this game before, as a different character. And someone needs to tell me who the hell it is. He definitely recorded the sound, because I'm watching the game sounds thing, and it's flicking up when he talks. So now I need to listen to the tales. Hi, Welcome Saina. Hi, April. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. It's a really pretty story. Do you want me to tell it? Yes, I do. Please, Saina, I would like that very much. Okay. This is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words as it was told to me by my teacher, in her words. In the small village of Jinjay near the rumbling hills of Onion, there lived a girl called Mona. She was a curious girl, and she would always get in the way of grown elation. Go play somewhere else, they would say to Mona, but she didn't want to play with the other children. She wanted to be where the grown-ups were, to see what they were doing, and learn from them. But one day, after getting many complaints from the pottery makers, and guardsmen, and traders, and soldiers in the village, <laughs> Mona's mother told her that she wasn't to interfere with the grown-ups anymore. They should be and that instead, color. she could go play with the other children, or sit still and draw, or work with clay. But Mona was always curious, and now, since she wasn't to be among the grown elation anymore, she decided to go exploring the forest that lay just outside of the village of Jinjay. She had many times been That's forbidden dangerous. to enter the forest because it could be a dangerous place, but Mona was very curious. Of course she wasn't planning on going far into the forest, but then her eye caught sight of a white fluff tail hopping through the tall grass, and Mona never gave chase. The Are you telling me the story of Alice in the Wonderland? Forest, and Mona followed, blind to where she was going, and interested I've heard only before. in Stop catching names. the white fluff tail so that she could it's keep a rabbit, it as a pet. Okay? But then, after a good while, the fluff tail disappeared into a hole in the ground, leaving Mona alone in a small clearing, somewhere deep inside the forest. She was exhausted after running after the fluff tail for so long. And as she looked around at the clearing at the unfamiliar trees and flowers, she realized that she hadn't been paying attention to where she was going. Not for the first time her curiosity had gotten the better of her, but this time it was serious. Mona was too young to fly, and she had very little sense of direction, and chasing the white fluff tail had made her dizzy and tired. It was getting darker, and Mona was all alone in the deep, dangerous forest. Too sleepy and too scared to be able to go anywhere. Mona curled up with her wings wrapped around her under the leaves of a tree. That makes sense. And began crying. Soon oh, it got really dark. No, and mm. somewhere, not far away, wolves started howling at the moon. Mona was so scared, she was petrified. But after a while, her exhaustion got the better of her. And she fell asleep. <sighs> Oh, how she, she woke up oh, when she God, heard a voice calling kid. her from somewhere far above. Looking up at the starry sky, Mona saw a vision of the spirits of five tellers gazing down at her. You have let your curiosity leave you astray, said one. You are lost, and you deserve to be lost, said another. Poor little girl, said a third. We will help you home, said a fourth. But remember this said the fifth spirit. We will lead you back to your village and to your mother only if you promise us one thing. I promise, said Mona. Whatever it is, I promise I will do it. 
Very well, said the first spirit. You will make the story of this night into your own tale, and you will call it the Tale of Stars. It will be a tale to warn the curious to be careful, continued the third spirit, and to not let their curiosity get the better of them. And, said the second spirit, to remind the elation that the spirits of their tellers watch out for them when they most need it. And so the spirits of the five tellers guided Mona through the forest, and by dawn she was home. And Mona did tell her tale, the tale of stars, to everyone in the village, so that everyone would remember that the curious must be cautious, and that the spirits of the tellers are always watching. This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. No, it wasn't. Thank you. You're no damn brown. Goodbye, Saina. You're leaving again? Yep. I wish you could stay. Dude, I got stuff to do. Me too, Saina. Believe me. Okay. That's two stories. I bet this old dude wants to tell me a tale. Oh my god. Hopefully this one's pretty quick. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Okay, I'm, I'm just Would you mind out. telling it to me? Well, you tell me. Okay. Is that I cool? would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by his teacher in his words. Oh, there's explosions. This was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum. Oh, no, this is more like it, but a war. wet tails. Akalis yeah. was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy, and his teeth strong. He was played by Gerard Akalis was admired by everyone in his clan, and because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of Akalis city asked him to perform a very important and very special duty. To bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an elation town across the sea. This particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns, and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Achilles grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry, because Achilles was young and too sure of himself. But she wanted to test him and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs, that a warrior must also be wise and careful. So Achilles set out across the sea this on his flight. This is a pretty good story. It was on no, the fourth day attention. that he so spotted something in the water that caught his attention. And forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, well, I mean, Achilles dived the towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he well, saw if, that if there were the merum stars, in the water, foolishly like, hunting close to the surface, like, and Achilles well, you know, saw an opportunity to again better, prove right? his might. As a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time, a callous arrogance got the better of him, because the Merum had set a trap. As he dived towards the Merum with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. A callous struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. A callous was bleeding, and the Merum were grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside. 
because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Akaris could not return to his village because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people, and so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Akaris now became the lost one. He who had been on a sacred mission, but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed, and one day Akaris met with human traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Akaris heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Aktawo. The Aktawo was said to have a third eye, like a jewel, <laughs> and that this eye pulled hapless sailors into its deadly eight-armed grasp. Akaris knew immediately that the Aktawo's third eye had to be the jewel that he lost in the sea a year ago. Really? And he now saw the opportunity to redeem himself. But elation were not used to water, and the thought of submerging himself in the cold, harsh ocean chilled Akalis to his heart. But he was the lost one, and if in his death he could at the very least redeem himself, to his own heart then, it would be worth it. So Akalis fashioned himself a spear because in the water his claws and his beak would be too slow, and he flew out to where the Octavo was last seen. And then Akalis dived into the sea. The dark water closed in on him, and his wings and legs went numb. But still Akalis kept pushing down until he saw the lair of the Octavo. Spotting Akalis, the Octavo attacked, and Akalis saw the monster's third eye his sacred jewel, shining bright in the Love darkness, darkness, and his heart was filled with a sense well, of just duty, have three hours, courage, like that he had never felt before. Then he'd have as died he began for fighting the eight-armed monster, Akalis realized that if he were to fight like he usually did, he would not stand a chance. He would have to think differently. And so Akalis tricked the Octavo into following him through a tight chasm where the monster got stuck. And then he swam above it and, using his spear, tipped a rock on top of the Octavo. Nice. Swimming back down again, the Octavo was flailing helplessly. Now, almost out of air, Akalis took the sacred jewel from the Octavo's head and swam back up. Finally, Akalis could deliver the sacred jewel to the town across the sea. And upon returning to his village, he went to the teller, bowed his head, and said, Forgive me, teller, for in my arrogance I thought I could do everything. But I could not, and I became the lost one because of it. You were lost, said the teller, but you are no more because now you see the limits of your own strength, and you will know that a warrior must be careful and wise, in addition to being strong and fierce. Not that I want to criticize This him. was the tale of Couldn't C. you have told him that before And I went, told it in my own words, like as told to me alone, by my I teacher. I probably went crazy, and then killed an octopus. Also, Maggie, you lied to me. These stories take forever. Maggie was all like, oh no, the stories aren't that long, you'll probably get through them. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of winds, Windbringer. Do you wish to hear it? Yeah, go on then. It's the last Very one much. Then I shall tell it. I'm just tired. This is the tale of winds, my tale. Did another speed I pledged to tell it in my own words, as told in turn by my teacher. Play guitar. In the village of Karan, in guitar, the mountains of tall winds, there lived a young Alation woman but I named Iwana. Like the sea scale now, Iwana had one like desire a... above oh, all beep, others, beep. to soar higher and farther than anyone else. And even though her wings were no broader, nor her body sleeker than anyone else's, she pursued this foolish desire without rest. And as time passed, she did soar higher, and she did fly farther than the other young Alation in her village. 
and her name became known far and wide amongst the tribes of the mountains of tall winds. This is still, Iwana was not happy. She was not happy because, in her vanity, even though she was a better flyer than almost everyone else, and to her eyes, she was still not good enough. That doesn't sound like She vanity. wanted to be so much better than anyone else that she would be remembered for all time as the best flyer amongst all the elation. Well, it's good to have a goal. And so one you know, you've day, got to have a dream and stuff. Iwana decided to climb to the top of Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light, and to soar from those giddy heights to the ends of the world. Her friends and her family pleaded with her not to, because every elation knew that to soar from such heights was dangerous. That at such heights the air was thin and the winds treacherous. But Iwana would not listen. Sometimes you gotta take and on a cold and clear morning she climbed up the Tower of Light to the rock and the ice at the very top. From there she could see to the ends of the world. And it brought tears to her eyes to know that now, finally, she would be greater and better than any elation before her. And so Iwana spread her wings and leaped off the mountain. Those who watched her from far below said that for a split moment Iwana soared, and she soared higher and farther than any elation before or since. But then the treacherous winds caught a hold of her. Oh no. And the thin air made her plummet <gasps> towards the ground and to fall to her death amongst the rocks at the base of the mountain. In her vanity, story, Iwana man. could not see beyond her desire to be the very best. And vanity always stands to fall. Sounds to me. That was the tale of wings. Like what you're my saying tale. to me. Is and I told it in my own words. Story as told to me in Don't turn, try and be better than everyone teacher. else. Because you'll die. That's not a good story. You're supposed to be telling people that they can be the best. And they, they should just apply themselves and stuff. That's an awful story. I don't like your story, mister. Not a fan of that at all. Right, I've heard the bloody stories now. Now can I go in? Are you ready for the questions now? Whose voice are you? Yes, ask me the questions. In the tale of winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? Mount Bakhtaana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, uh, what did Mona towers. see in the sky that five helped tellers. her find her way home? The five tellers. The spirits of five tellers. That is correct. In the Tale of Sea, what creature did the lost one battle in his quest to recover the sacred jewel? Magic octopus. The octavo? That is correct. My final question to you is this. In the tale of homecoming, what was given to Moran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? A broken pot to teach him yeah, that yeah, absence may break a heart right. in two. I'm like, I'm like you have correctly answered Pokemon. all my questions and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. Yes, I the am. The teller would see you presently. You shouldn't doubt me. Right. That is unfortunately it for today. Is it? Is that it for today? It is, isn't it? Dang. Well, tomorrow, hopefully, um, I'll be talking to the teller and reuniting the Elation people with the Marum. And then after that, I, uh, I get the stone. And I can move on to go getting the third stone. So, you know, slowly getting there. Uh, slowly re-catching up with Maggie uh, after she marathon played last night to make sure she was nicely ahead of me before I started recording again today. Did I save the game? Did I? Did I? I did now. Anyway guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll be back tomorrow with more Vogta Plays The Longest Journey.